Here I'm going to go through some basics with you on how to draw organic molecules, and then later we'll look a little bit at how you name them, uh, but also how you go about learning organic chemistry kind of from the start. So there's different ways to represent these. Assuming you're familiar with Lewis structures, typically we start with the structural representation or a Lewis structure. Uh, this is C5H12. And this is another way to represent it. And what I want you to do first is kind of look at this and go, okay, how is this the exact same thing as this? And how is it represented differently? And how does that work? And what are the advantages and disadvantages? So for instance, when you're looking at this, what you should see when you're, when you're beyond a novice level at least, is this CH3 is this component of this. And this CH2 is this component of it. And this CH2 is this component of it. And this one is this one. And this final CH3 here is this. So when someone's new to this, often they're confused by the three hydrogens in between the two carbons because they don't understand that those three hydrogens are connected to this carbon, and then that carbon is connected to that via that bond there. So hydrogen only forming one bond and carbon forming four dictates a lot of how the structure of this looks. And that's not always represented in some of these formulas. And as you're you know, trying your best to learn all this new information, a lot of times things like that will slip through and you won't see them until you try it. So it's important as we go through this and I give you a chance to, go ahead and try and work out and do some of the conversions between the different things. Now, there are structural representations, there are condensed representations, and then there are some other things we can do too. So here is another representation of this. And I believe this one's called the skeletal, but names aren't really important here. The idea is, how does this work the same as those? So in this type of representation, anytime you see a point where two lines meet or a line ends, that represents a carbon. So this is a carbon, 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 and carbon. And in a skeletal uh, drawing, you omit all the hydrogen. So they're there, but we're not gonna draw any of them to save time. So this carbon is this carbon here, and it has three hydrogens attached. Now, to be able to take this and move back to here, what you need to understand is that that carbon is attached to one other carbon, and it's gonna make four bonds. So it must have three hydrogens attached, since it only has one other bond. This carbon has two carbons attached, this one and this one. So this carbon should only have spots for two hydrogens. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens, and three hydrogens. So your terminal carbons are going to have three hydrogens, and the ones that are in between two carbons are going to have two hydrogens. And so you have these three different things. What are the benefits and costs of these? So this one gives you the most information. This one's a little easier to write, but then we sometimes lose sight of the structure for new people. But for, for expert organic chemists, that's not a problem at all. For this, this is the best one because this is the easiest one to write. So you can communicate the most information the quickest. To draw out a large structure in one of these is very, very long, whereas to use a skeletal structure is much, much simpler to kind of do. So let's go ahead and do this. Why don't you go ahead and try and just see if you can See if you can go ahead and take this and from that produce what the condensed structure would look like or the structural formula would look like. Uh, and go ahead and just pause the video for a second and try and put that together. And then I'll go ahead and put up the answer for one of them. And let's see, condensed structure. So if I start up here, I have a CH3, bonded to a CH2, bonded to a carbon. Now this carbon has three different carbons attached, so that's going to be a CH. We have a CH3 coming up here, where that, that linkage is from the carbon to the carbon. Really, I shouldn't draw that where it's connected to the hydrogen. In fact, let me swap that out. Make sure that's clear. Okay, and then we have from there to there, we have a CH, a CH3, and a CH3. So doing things like that at the beginning is really valuable. Before you get someone who tells you too much information, you want to take some time and, and just kind of take a minute to process and understand and learn what some of the conversions are between these different sets. And then there's one more type of drawing that we haven't really talked about, and that is three dimensional. So this one's a little tricky, especially at the beginning. So if you're really just starting out, you might want to save this for later. But in three dimensions, what we like to do is we like to draw dashes and wedges. Um, I've seen dashes like this. I've also seen them just be dashed lines like that. That's also kind of used equivalently as far as I understand. 
So something like this, the three-dimensional thing. So here we have a carbon, the white ones are the two hydrogens, the green ones are the two chlorines. And so when I'm seeing this, this wedge and this dashed line, the dash means that it's behind the plane of the paper or the board that you're drawing. So this hydrogen here would be this one that's further away from the camera would be behind the board, so to speak. So if I'm kind of defining the board as this kind of plane that intersects like this, this one is this one over here, and then this one, the wedge, is the one that's in front of the board. So when I kind of set that up and look at that, this is my wedge and this is my dash line when I take a view from this point of view. And so drawing in three dimensions and thinking in three dimensions is really challenging, but it's also really important. So let's look at why. So here's a model representation I built earlier of this. And you want to look at this and kind of go, okay, what are some key differences we notice between this structure and this? One of the biggest ones is this one is drawn in two dimensions. It's drawn with 90 degree angles, and they're really not like that. These are all tetrahedrally arranged. So they have bond angles of 109.5. And I can get it to kind of go in a mostly straight line with a little bit of zigging and zagging. Um, but I really don't get the same representation as this. So this is kind of inadequate. And sometimes you'll see the structures eventually kind of bear that out when we do this zigzag type motion. Um, but really, this is the same thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart and form a new structure. And whenever we make something new with the same parts, we call that an isomer. So this is a structural isomer of that. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and look at that structural isomer and get rid of these. And then kind of lead into naming. So in this one, I've drawn this. One, two, three, four. Five. So this is still C5H12, same as it was before. But we want to look at the fact that this and that are identical. And this is something that at the beginning is a really important idea, that if you have a molecule, it shouldn't matter whether you rotate it, how you name it or what it is. This is still the same molecule whether I look at it like this or whether I look at it like that. And so we want to kind of have this uniformity of we're always describing the same thing. And so when we go through and doing our naming and analysis of this, we need to make sure that this and this are equivalent. And the way we do that is by looking at how many carbons there are in a row and setting up a system to analyze those numbers of carbons so that we always get the same result. So if I started left to right and numbered this one, two, three, four, and then I had a branch over here of, at the third carbon, then when I did left to right over here, I would get a different result where here my branch would come off at the second carbon. And so what I want to do instead of that is I always want to number so that I get to the first branch first, whatever that is. If there's a tie, we, we tie break using alphabet and what the next branch is or whatever we need to. Uh, but what we do is we go, oh, this is not the way I want to number this. I want to number this differently so that I don't end up with the branch of three, but rather I end up with the branch of two, just like I would here. And so this one right here is called 2-methyl butane, where the 2 tells us that there is a single carbon, a methyl group attached to the second carbon of the butane chain. And I would get the same name for this, even though it's drawn differently, because I still have a methyl group, a single carbon here, attached to the second carbon of the chain of that butane chain. So really, when we're starting off and looking at these things, you want to blend in a little bit of how do I draw these and how do I represent them with a little bit of how do I do some of the naming on them. And you want to kind of go back and forth and go, what is my understanding of these? What can I do? What can I do? Rather than just watch someone and go through and look at how do I do this? Because if you watch an expert do it like me, there's going to be things that I recognize that you're going to miss and you want to take the time to go through it properly to kind of fill in those gaps as you get presented with the opportunities so that your learning is strong. All right, so let's go ahead and let's look a little more naming. And I'll go ahead and clear this off and we'll, we'll skip to that. So here are a bunch of compounds that I'm gonna go through and name, but before I do, it's best if you can kind of try them yourself. So if you wanna go one at a time, I'm gonna go blue, white, yellow, pink, green. And if you wanna pause in between, and think about what the name of the next thing might be as you pick up on it, it'd be really helpful for you to learn a little better. All right, so the first one, the first thing I need to do is I need to number the chain. So if I look, I can go from this side over here, I can go from this side over here, 
Uh, alternatively, I could start up here or come up here. Uh, so if I number this way, I'm going to go one, two, three. I get to my first branch. If here, I get to the first branch on the second carbon, so I'm going to number here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Again, it would have been the same if I had gone one, two, three, four, five. So what I see happening here is that I have a branch here and a branch here. So I have a methyl branch, that's a single carbon here. I have a methyl branch here. So I have two methyl groups, and I would call that dimethyl. And then I want to put where they are. One is at the second carbon, one is at the third. So two comma three dash dimethyl, and then I have five carbons long. This would be dimethyl pentane. So that name is always going to give me that structure, regardless of which way I orient it and how I flip it, rotate it, and present it. it doesn't really matter. That will always link with that. Now the second one up here, again, if you want to try and figure it out on your own first, it's helpful. Uh, what I would do here is I would look, and I would actually go one, two, three, four, five, six, but I can get a longer chain by going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the longest chain is defined as kind of how long of a chain you can make without lifting up your pen or pencil. So I'm going to go ahead and number this starting here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have again a methyl group here on the third carbon. So we would call that 3-methyl peptane. All right, so what if I have something besides a methyl group or an ethyl group or one of those? So again, we're gonna treat these just as they're a branch, so I have a chlorine and bromine. I can go one, two, three, four, and I get to here at the second carbon, or I can go one, two, three, four. So in this case, I have a tie. Either way I come and I get to the a, a branch at the second carbon, and then if I continue on at the third carbon, I might, excuse me, other branch. So then I would tie break using alphabet. So bromo comes before chloro. So I'm going to number so I get to the bromo first instead of the chloro. So this would be 2 dash bromo dash 3 dash chloro. And then I've got four carbons, so that would be a butane. So I was going to say earlier that I kind of got tripped up on is anytime you have two numbers, you always separate them by a comma. Anytime you have a number and a letter, you separate by a dash. Okay. All right, the pink one here, this is a double bond. So this would be a good opportunity to go through and look at what the uh, condensed or structural formula would look like. So here we're looking at carbon, carbon to a CH3, and a hydrogen, and then we have a CH3, and a hydrogen. Sometimes you'll see the H3C written so that the carbons connect. Um, so I'm looking at a chain one, two, three, four carbons long, so that's butte. And then instead of ane, since I have a double bond, I'm going to end that in ene. And I want to put where that double bond is located. So it can either be between the first and second carbons or between the second and third. This is between the second and third. This will be butte two ene. So if I number this, it doesn't really matter which way I go. One, two, three, four. Now this one is also an interesting one because it turns out that if I were to put this uh, CH3 group on this side of the double bond, that that would actually be a different compound. So there is a secondary name that you can add to this. Um, since the two CH3s are on opposite sides, this would be called trans-butuene, or you could also call this E-butuene. Uh, e and Z are used to uh, for any any of these, you can also use cis and trans when the two groups are the same on both sides. Um, so in this case, I could go trans, or you could say this is e butene, and it, with an e, you put it in parentheses. All right, and the final one here. Let's see. This one looks complicated. So let's start by figuring out which way we get to a branch first. So here we get to a branch first on this side. So let's go ahead and number one, two, three, four, five. And it doesn't matter which way we go, so I'll just go ahead and do this because, I don't know, lots of years of reading. So seven, we end up with heptane. We don't have any double bonds. And we've got a methyl group, methyl group, and an ethyl group, so two carbons. And then we've got a chloro. So chloro, ethyl, and methyl, Chloro is going to come first, 
then ethyl, and then the dimethyl. So we're going to write 3 dash chloro. Hope I end up with enough room. And then we're going to write the ethyl, 5 dash ethyl. And then we have a 2, 4, so let's make a little more, 2, 4 dimethyl and heptane. Now this is a really good one because there's a lot of information here. So one, we went alphabetically to write it, chloral, ethyl, and dimethyl, but the di did not implicate our, our uh, alphabet. So di comes before ethyl, but we don't consider that, we just look at the group itself. So the methyl group comes later. Note that I didn't look at whether it was a methyl or ethyl group to come first, I looked for what was the first chain I could get to. So I went here, got to a chain, or a branch, I'm sorry. So I got to a branch on this side, I didn't on this side, I numbered this way. Also, just to point out again, I would get the exact same answer if I had numbered starting from there. One, two, three, four, five, and really, let's just go down here. So if I went like that, I would have ended up with a methyl group at two, a chloro at three, a, another methyl at four, and I would have ended up with an ethyl at five. And so it doesn't really matter sometimes where you start your chain, you have two equivalent options. These CH3s are identical, whether I consider it part of my chain or branch, it's really kind of just the decision you have to just make, and there's no real tiebreaker for that.